Right. So, today what we will do is to look at one of the most important consequences of the equation for uh, the density, probability density function for diffusion in a potential. It is called the Smoluchowski equation as you know and we will derive from it a very important consequence as something which has a wide range of applications. So, to recall to you what the Smoluchowski equation was, we are looking at a one dimensional variable x like the position of a diffusing particle on the x axis and then the Smoluchowski equation was the equation for the probability density function p of x comma t which is derived from the general Langevin equation in the high friction limit. So, if you recall the equation in the high friction limit uh, in the actual Langevin equation was m x double dot plus m gamma x dot was equal to minus the force on the particle which is V prime of x and then there was a noise term which was essentially square root of 2 m gamma k Boltzmann t times the white noise, the delta correlated white noise with unit strength here and then this went over in the high friction limit. So, gamma large, it went over to this equation x dot is minus 1 over m gamma v prime of x plus the square root of this divided by m gamma. So, it is twice k Boltzmann t over m gamma times zeta of t. Now, that is the Langevin equation in one variable with this drift term and that diffusion term. So, it immediately follows that this quantity p of x comma t, this conditional density, some initial condition satisfies the corresponding diffusion equation in the presence of a potential which we call the Smoluchowski equation. So, this I think implied that delta p over delta t was equal to minus the drift term, the derivative of it. So, it is 1 over m gamma delta over delta x v prime of x times p that is the first term plus the diffusion term which is k Boltzmann t over m gamma. It is a square of this divided by 2 the g squared over 2 part times delta 2 p over delta x 2. This is the Smoluchowski equation. This equation here is a Smoluchowski equation. Okay. One of the questions, important questions is, is there a steady state or equilibrium distribution at all? Hmm? So, let us start at that point. If at all there is such, such, is, uh, such a distribution, so we are saying that p of x comma t, if tends as t tends to infinity, tends to p equilibrium of x, then this quantity p equilibrium of x must satisfy an ordinary differential equation with this e set equal to 0. And that equation of course, is 1 over um, is k Boltzmann t, it is the following. Ah, before that, before that, before I write this, notice that this equation, because this is a derivative can be pulled out of on the right hand side could be written as equal to minus delta over delta x j of x comma t some current. So, this equation has the form of a continuity equation delta rho over delta t plus divergence of j equal to 0. So, it is got exactly that form, but this j, j of x comma t equal to minus whatever is inside the d over d x here. So, it is minus v prime of x over m gamma p inside there uh, plus k Boltzmann t over m gamma delta p over delta x. All I have done is to write out a delta over delta x outside 
and then times this bracket here. So this, if you like, is the current, the probability current. Okay. And now, if if p of x comma t tends to p equilibrium of x as t tends to infinity, then it means delta p over delta t is 0 and therefore this quantity here d over dx of this guy must be equal to 0. Okay. So this will imply that d over dx of so this fellow is 0, so it says d over dx of uh, minus v prime of x over m gamma minus d over dx of v prime of x plus k Boltzmann t. I want to retain these factors for a minute as you will see why dp equilibrium over dx. Ah, times p equilibrium. So let me write these factors out carefully. p equilibrium of x plus k Boltzmann t over m gamma dp over dx must be equal to 0, which means that this quantity is a constant. Okay. And if it is a normalizable distribution, then you would say the constant is 0. It is 0 at infinity, so it is 0 everywhere. And then you would get a simple solution for p equilibrium of x. So on the other hand, it is conceivable that we could look at this as a problem in which you have a steady flux of many particles coming in, a standard flux, and then there is some complicated potential, these particles are riding through under thermal agitation as well, and then there is a flux outward. So there is a stationary current. So it is possible there is a stationary current in the problem, which we do not know as yet. So the general solution is not that this quantity equal to 0, but that this quantity is equal to a constant. Right? So this means that the general solution is that V prime of x over m gamma p equilibrium of x. Uh, Let us write the derivative term first. So k Boltzmann t over m gamma dp equilibrium over dx plus v prime of x p equilibrium divided by m gamma is equal to minus j stationary. So this is some stationary current. Because it is stationary, it is a function of x alone just as these fellows are all functions of x alone. That is the general solution to this equation. Right? So what does that imply? It says dp equilibrium over dx plus v prime of x over k Boltzmann t p equilibrium is equal to minus m gamma over k Boltzmann t j stationary. And if it is a flux which is moving smoothly, constant, uniform flux, that is a constant. The constant is a some number there, right? So you can pull that out and you have to solve this equation with this constant as some constant, right? And what is the general solution to this equation? Well, it depends on the initial condition. But suppose I have an arbitrary initial condition, I will integrate this equation without specifying an initial condition with an integration constant put in there. Hmm? So the general solution to this equation, pretending for a minute that we know this j is stationary, so pretending that we know this constant, we will determine it in a, a self-consistent way, is the following. So it says p equilibrium of x e to the power, you have to integrate e to the integral p dx, this is the function p which is v of x over kt. So this says p equilibrium e to the v of x over k Boltzmann t 
is equal to some constant, integration constant, minus m gamma over k Boltzmann t j stationary, whatever that number is, times an integral dx e to the integral p dx. So, e to the power v of x by k Boltzmann t. That is the solution. Okay. And if I move this factor to the right hand side, then it is this. e to the minus v of x over k Boltzmann t. So, notice we still have to do this integral and we do not know what this v of x is in general, but formally we can write the solution down. If you tell me and you measure a steady flux at some point in the x axis and then you say that that number is j stationary, pardon me. No, I am saying that it is a stationary current, it is a constant. D over dx of something is equal to 0, which implies this something is equal to a constant. And j stationary has to be a constant because it would have to satisfy the continuity equation, right? And the p corresponding p is 0 and derivative is 0, so j stationary has to be a constant. So, sorry, this is wrong. This is wrong. I should not have put that that it is a constant, right. So, that is the formal solution and to write it down explicitly, you have to give me some boundary conditions. You have to tell me act x equal to whatever point, some x naught or something, you have to tell me what this is and then in terms of that, I determine t, put this in, right, okay. Now, let us apply this solution to a very crucial problem and this problem is called Kramer's escape rate formula. And we are going to derive this formula. Okay. Now, the formula itself envisages the following. Suppose you have a particle moving in a potential and the potential has ups and downs and so on and at some point it encounters a minimum of the potential. You would expect that the concentration of particles is very high in the minimum, very low in the maximum of the potentials and somewhere in between, between extrema, right. Now, you could ask because there is thermal agitation, particles have been kicked all the time, is there a possibility that a particle might jump over the barrier and go to the other side of, the, of a maximum? And if so, at what rate is it doing? So, the general scenario envisaged, it is the classical thermally assisted process, completely classical. So, it is the analog of quantum mechanical tunneling. Tunneling appears, uh, happens because of quantum physics. There is no classical tunneling at all. But the following can happen. Let us suppose that the V of x looks like this. There is a minimum somewhere and then there is a maximum and then it goes off in this fashion, okay. So, if I schematically say this is V of x versus x on this side, you could ask if I start with a particle here, at what rate will it have flow outwards across the maximum to the other side? At what rate will it escape the barrier, okay. Now, you could ask why should it escape the barrier? Well, if you put a particle here with this with zero kinetic energy, it is just going to remain here, but remember it is being buffeted by thermal agitation. So, all the while there is kicks which are moving the particle and now the question is what is the escape rate going to be? It is a hard problem if you have quantum mechanical tunneling and if your k t is so high, this is an energy scale in the vertical side, is so high that the barrier is not even visible to it. But what happens if kt is much smaller than the height of the barrier? So that is the question we are going to look at. Let us give some names to these points. So let us say this name point is x0, this point is x1, some point here is x2 and I want to know what is the rate of escape 
of particles if there is a steady flux coming in from one side from the region around x naught to a point like x 2. So, this is the question we would like to answer. Yeah, I am so I am not worried about what happens here. I would like to know what is what is the rate at which particles escape the minimum can go across the maximum and get to the other side of it. Precisely where on the other side is an irrelevant detail. I can compute it for any point. Okay. The assumption is that V of x 1 minus V of x naught which I will call delta V this is the definition of the barrier height the maximum minus the minimum that is the height of the barrier. The assumption is that is much bigger than the energy imparted by single thermal agitation by k t much greater than k t. So, delta V much much greater than k Boltzmann t that is the regime we are interested in. Now, you can see why this is going to be a tricky problem because you have a particle here imagine it has got 0 kinetic energy it gets kicked to the right by thermal agitation k t typically k t energy it goes up a little bit, but then it gets kicked back and so on it will oscillate about this point move randomly about this point. To get it across this barrier in some fashion you have to coherently kick it <laughs> with a lot of k t's all in one direction. So, it is very improbable it is very improbable, but it is a non-zero probability and the question is to calculate what it is. Yeah, yeah so we are going to make that the thing we are going to say there is a constant flux of particles coming in. So, for some given constant flux what is it? In fact, we are going to do something better. We are going to argue and we know this that the equation the diffusion equation obeyed by the concentration of particles is the same as the diffusion equation obeyed by the probability density for a single particle if they are not all interacting with each other. It is the same diffusion equation. So, in a sense either I talk about the concentration of particles here or I talk about the probability mass of the particles here. Huh? So, I am going to ask a general question. I take particles in some region A to B. and I ask how many particles are there it is the same as the integral of the probability density equilibrium density from A to B and I ask what is the flux at a point like x 2 okay. and the answer is that the flux at x 2 on the right hand side is equal to the probability mass around x naught multiplied by rate of escape of each particle. So, I find the constant rate of escape of each particle multiply that by the probability mass and that is the flux at I am interested in computing this rate of escape. Hmm? Now, you can see that this is a paradigm for a large number of processes. Any thermally assisted process which involves an activation barrier is precisely this problem. For instance, if you have molecules here and you have a reaction chemical reaction and there is an against this energy barrier against this reaction. So, the molecule here has to hit the molecule there in order for the reaction to happen, but there is an energy barrier in between. Then the rate of this reaction is going to depend on the rate at which this escapes the barrier and gets there. So, in that sense this is a very general formula. Now, the question is how is it going to depend on this height and how is it going to depend on the temperature? given the fact that this height is much much greater than the temperature. So, that is the question we are going to answer and that is going to give us a final answer for this rate of escape which is called the Kramer's escape rate formula. 
So it surely has to do with the shape of the potential here, the shape of the potential there and so on. They are going to play a role. The height of this potential barrier is also going to play a role. It is biased in the sense that the moment you have a potential, there is a bias at every point and that is the reason why in the Smolkovsky equation you got a drift term. So the drift term is acting like an X dependent bias if you like. There are times when it will be favorable to one direction, favorable to the other, it depends on V of X, V prime of X precisely. We will look at the problem of a constant bias like gravity, we will do that at the end. But here we got a much more general question and right now we are looking at the problem of an escape over a barrier. So definitely the potential is assumed to have a minimum and a maximum and we would like to compute these quantities here. So the rate of escape is what we want to compute but first we need to compute the probability mass. So let us remember this formula, the rate of escape lambda escape rate is equal to flux at x2, that is the stationary current. So this is J stationary divided by probability mass around the point x0. So divided by an integral from A to B dx P equilibrium of x. So this is what we want to compute. And we are going to make a number of approximations in doing this because the formula is an approximate one and you will see how good the approximation is as we go along. Now first step, we already found the formula for P equilibrium and you have to tell me what it is. It was if I recall right, it was C minus M gamma over K Boltzmann T, no times an J stationary integral dx e to the power v of x over k Boltzmann t. This is an indefinite integral, so it is a function of x multiplying e to the minus v of x over k Boltzmann t. You can erase this now, but you see we need to do this, to do, <laughs> to find this we need to know what is j stationary. So this fellow is, is sitting right here in this thing here. But now I am going to argue that this J stationary is small, is negligible because it is a small flux. You, what do you, how many particles do you expect to come out here? It is a highly improbable thing. So to leading approximation, except you cannot kill it here, then of course there is nothing, right. But anything which comes from here goes up, goes to higher order in J stationary. So to leading order in the denominator, we are going to kill this here. So this is approximately equal to C e to the minus V of X over K Boltzmann T. So I want you to understand clearly that this is self consistent. This whole thing is an approximate formula, we are finding the leading contribution under these conditions. So this is going to give you higher order terms including it, but in the leading order, this is what it is. But there is an unknown constant sitting here. Right? How are we going to determine that? Well, if this is true, then it is immediately clear that P equilibrium of X0, whatever that be, whatever that be at the minimum of the potential is equal to the same constant C e to the minus V of X0 over K Boltzmann. I do not care, I do not care. You specify what A should be, what B should be because you will see that this answer is going to become independent of A and B due to the nature of the integrant as you will see in a minute, okay. in just a minute we will come to that. So P equilibrium is this quantity and the ratio of the two the C cancels out. So you could also write this as equal to P equilibrium of X0 which is itself unknown times e to the power V of X0 minus V of X over K Boltzmann. 
So, I got rid of this, but in favor of this constant. Now, I need to integrate, yeah. The base station is the value of uh, the time that it At any point. So, what is happening is, the, what you are envisaging is, way out here, you are going to insert particles at a stationary rate and they are going to come out at that stationary rate, but the question is, how is this barrier affecting that J station? Yeah, it will depend on the, it will depend on this flux. It is a constant, it is independent of x because that is how we defined J stationary. It was the integration constant on the right hand side, right. We had d over dx, this uh, current state, this uh, dp whatever it is equal to 0 and therefore that whatever in the bracket is equal to constant and that has got the significance of a current, some stationary current, right. Okay. So, the question is how is this barrier affecting it? So, essentially what we are asking is finally, the final question is given that the part of A particle starts here, what is the probability that it is going to be thermally assisted to get out of it? Okay. Even if you wait for a long, long, long time, what is going to be the probability? All right. So, we have a formula for P equilibrium, but we need to integrate it from A to B. Hmm? So, let us do that. Therefore, integral dx P equilibrium of x, this is a constant, so it comes out P equilibrium of x naught e to the power V of x naught comes out. And then you have to integrate integral from A to B dx e to the minus v of x over k Boltzmann. You have to do this integral. Now, look at the nature of this integration. Hmm? You got e to the power a function in a neighborhood of the minimum at this point, right. So, whenever v of x naught, v of x is large, this integral dies, dies down because e to the minus and the largest contribution will come from the minimum of the potential because that is where V of x out there has this integral is going to make sense. It is going to be nearest e to the 0 which is 1, right. All right. So, this means you can write V of x equal to V of x naught plus x minus x naught V prime of x naught which is 0. So, this is now a straightforward Gaussian integration. That is 0 plus x minus x naught whole squared over 2 factorial v double prime of x naught plus higher order terms. And they are all sitting in the exponent. So, this means you can take this out and write as p equilibrium of x naught e to the minus the leading term is v of x naught which cancels this goes away. And then you have an integral a to b dx e to the minus x minus x naught whole squared over 2 or oh, there is a k Boltzmann t also. So, k, k Boltzmann t here at this thing and then v double prime at x naught into 1 plus higher terms because I can write the next term the cube term by taking it out down here by expanding the exponent, but the leading contribution comes from here. That is like a Gaussian integral and in a Gaussian integral, the bulk of the integration comes from the maximum of the potential. In e to the minus a x squared, the bulk of the contribution comes from the point near the origin, right. And the rest of it is exponentially down. So, this is a standard approximation. It is called, goes by many names. It is the starting point of something called the method of steepest descent, the method of the phase method and so on, saddle point method. It has got many, many names. We are looking at the simplest version of it, okay. And then in the same spirit, you can actually ex extend this integral from minus infinity to infinity because again the contribution comes from just the center. Everything else is exponentially down. So, the dependence on A and B is gone out here. 
and we know the formula for this e to the minus a x squared is square root of pi over a from minus infinity to infinity. Hmm? Provided a is positive that it is k t is positive and this is at a minimum of the potential. So, the second derivative is positive we are sure about that. Hmm? So, this quantity here is greater than 0. So, this is p equilibrium of x naught and then this exponential factor is gone square root of 2 pi k Boltzmann t divided by v double pi of x naught. That is the denominator. So, this is equal to j stationary divided by p equilibrium of x naught square root of 2 pi k Boltzmann t over v double prime of x naught. We set that aside. Okay. Hmm? It's going to come because we still have to find j stationary, right? We still have to find j stationary. So, how are we going to do that? Well, we got to go right back now and put things in. So, how are we going to find j stationary? We have a formula for, we need a formula for this guy. We have this fellow sitting here. What, uh, what are we going to do next? How are you going to find j? D, uh, you have to remind me of this equation. J stationary, pardon me? Minus V prime of x at 1 m gamma. Yeah, one, 1 over m gamma. It was a minus sign. Yeah, minus. So, this d d p equilibrium over d x. So, let us pull out k d t. Yeah. Plus p equilibrium times there was another term v prime. Exactly. So, that was j stationary, right, which is equal to minus k b t over m gamma. I will write this as a total derivative. So, I can write this as d over d x times d over d x of p equilibrium times e to the power v of x by k Boltzmann t because it looks like a total derivative. If I do this, I get dp over dx times the exponential plus p equilibrium times v prime divided by kbt, but I should now compensate for that e to the v e power minus v of x over kbt. Okay. So, I rewrite it in this form. Therefore, j stationary multiplied by e power v of x over k b t is therefore equal to minus k b t over m gamma d over d x p equilibrium e to the v of x over k b t. If I get this right with all the factors and so on, it will be a miracle because I want to be careful about the factors and not make a mistake somewhere because then it means the formula. I know the final end product formula. That is very easy to remember. So, I just want to make sure I get all the factors right. Okay. And now, let us integrate this from, remember the geometry, we have a thing like this and then went off. This fellow was x naught this was the peak x 1 at this point and then you looked at some point x 2 here. So, let us integrate this from x naught to x 1, uh, x 2 all the way. So, let us integrate d x from x naught to x 2. Let us integrate this. So, this is integrated x naught to x 2 d x. 
So, remember this is some horrible function, we do not know what it is, but I am going to accept it has a shape like this and I am going to integrate it from x0 to x2. What is appearing on this side is e to the vx with a plus sign. So, again this is going to contribute the maximum at the maximum of the potential, elsewhere it is going to drop down very, very rapidly, right. So, now let us write this therefore as integral from x1 to x0 to x2 j is stationary out there and then dx e to the v of x let us do an integration saddle point or, or Gaussian integration around the maximum of the potential x1. So, I will write this as e to the power v of x1 and again the first derivative is 0. So, the next term is x minus x1 whole squared over 2 factorial v double prime at x1 plus higher order terms, the whole thing divided by kt that is the left hand side which is approximately equal to j stationary e to the v of x1 over k Boltzmann t times a Gaussian integral, but it is got a plus out here. However, you are at a maximum and therefore, the second derivative is guaranteed to be negative. So, therefore, I can write this as modulus and there is a minus sign here. And that integral is equal to square root of pi over a in the formula square root of 2 pi k Boltzmann t divided by modulus of v double prime of x1. That must be equal to on the right hand side this integral out here from x0 to x2 of a total derivative, right. So, this is equal to minus k Boltzmann t over m gamma times all we have to do is to write now p equilibrium at x2 e to the power v of x2 over k Boltzmann t minus p equilibrium of x0 e to the power v of x0 over k Boltzmann t. Is that a plus sign or a minus sign? It is a plus sign. It is a plus sign as it stands. I am not too thrilled by that. Mm. Yeah, that is okay. That is okay. We have to go where it takes us. Right. Now, the probability itself at any point is vanishing out here like x2. Most of the probability mass is sitting here, out here. Therefore, compared to this term, this term is negligible. Potential is concerned, they do not make a difference, they are of the same weight. So, these factors are of the same order, but this thing here is much smaller than that, okay. It is very improbable that you find something at x2. So, you neglect this and you get approximately this thing here is approximately k Boltzmann t over m gamma times p of equilibrium of x0 e to the power v of x0 over k Boltzmann t and we are nearly home. So, this says j stationary you took, uh, took take everything to the right hand side and this therefore is equal to k Boltzmann t over m gamma p equilibrium of x0 is still sitting there. I move this factor to the right hand side, it comes with a minus sign and this is a plus sign here. So, e to the power minus delta v at last over k Boltzmann t that is sitting there and then take this to the right hand side. So, square root of 
modulus v double prime of x1 divided by k Boltzmann t divided by this guy, the whole thing divided by p equilibrium of x0 and then this factor, so I can again write this or oh, there is a 2 pi, right. And then this goes up in the numerator once again. So this is uh, V double prime of X naught divided by 2 pi K Boltzmann T. And notice P equilibrium of X naught cancels out. We do not know this number. We are not able to compute that number without actually solving the full equation and finding out what the steady state solution is, but it mercifully cancels out. Okay. The T cancels out as well. So the K Boltzmann T cancels against this and this. So we finally get this lambda escape equal to square root of V double prime of x naught modulus v double prime of x1 divided by 2 pi m gamma e to the minus delta v over k Boltzmann. This is the Kramer's escape rate formula. So it tells you that the rate at which this escape happens depends exponentially on the barrier height with a 1 over kt. That is precisely of the RNES form. And as you know, this is an extremely sensitive function of the temperature. A small change in the temperature changes things enormously. The rates of chemical reactions which are thermally assisted changes enormously with the temperature for a given barrier height. Similarly, once you increase the barrier height, this exponentially becomes more difficult to happen. It justifies post facto our assumption that the probability is actually pretty small. The escape rate is pretty small, but this is indeed uh, non perturbative in the sense that it is not a uh, power series in delta V over kT or anything like that. It is actually gives you an exponential form in 1 over t. Okay. That is why um, chemical reactions require very high temperatures in general unless of course you have enzymes. Otherwise, given, just think about it. Every time you take in food, your system actually breaks down these complex molecules and makes other complex molecules. But when you cook food, you do so at very, very high temperatures. That is how much energy it takes to break those bonds down, right. On the other hand, you ingest this food and your stomach does it actually effortlessly apparently at 37 Celsius. So it would have come down enormously the rate of reaction, but it is working because there are enzymes, okay. But this temperature dependence of the RNAs formula, this thermally activated processes is very typical. Multiplied by these factors here, now geometrically of course these are the curvatures of the point of the potential at that point. So you can write this in a very compact way, that is the way it is normally written. You could say well, if I have uh, a potential like that, around this point this curvature can be subsumed in the frequency of harmonic oscillations about this minimum. So let us call that frequency omega naught around the point x1, x naught. And similarly, this is an inverted parabola. So let us call the frequency of this inverted parabola, the harmonic approximation. Let us call that frequency omega 1. Then of course this uh, curvature here, V double prime, this is uh, equal to this thing here is m omega naught squared and this is m omega 1 squared and the m cancels that way. So this gives you a nice little formula which is omega naught omega 1 over 2 pi, two, two pi, gamma. Two pi gamma e to the minus delta v over k Boltzmann t. This is the Kramer's formula. That is a simple derivation of uh, this formula. Now we can put in all the various complications and so on. For instance, you could ask what happens if this is uh, potential barrier height is brought down, kT is made larger, 
what happens if you have uh, more singular potential and so on. What happens if you have quantum tunneling assisting this thermal process? These are complicated questions, but they do have physical applications, physical importance. But in the simplest instance, this is the way the Kamas is formula is derived. The ingredients in it are the curvature, the minimum, the curvature at the maximum of the potential at the height of the barrier, at the bottom of the barrier and the energy difference, the potential difference with the temperature appearing here. This is a very mild dependence on temperature, powers and so on. But the free factor as it turns out in the leading approximation is not even temperature dependent. Yeah, now we have assumed that things are curvature exists, it is finite, etc., etc. So, you will have to do those case by case. Yeah. Because at nightly you say lead of yeah. prime of x1 is 0. Yeah, or if it is, but this is the generic case. You could ask what happens if V double prime is also 0 and it is a very flat fourth order potential and so on. I leave you to play with those things and find out what happens here. But the trick, essential trick, is the Gaussian trick. Okay. The next problem we are going to look at is what happens in a constant force field. I said we would do this and then go back to the Smolikovsky equation. That is a linear problem, it is relatively simple. Again, I call attention to the fact that what we have done is a self-consistent calculation. We assume that there is a stationary current which is non-zero, a stationary flux and then we kind of found it by a self-consistent way, by a sequence of approximations knowing beforehand that the prob equilibrium stationary, the equilibrium density at beyond the barrier is actually going to be quite small because of this barrier. How small? Exponentially small by the height of this barrier. And one should have expected this because the only energy scale in the problem is this and of course the height of the barrier. So this has got to be some function of the ratio. Let us look at the problem of sedimentation. Again, let us convert it to a one-dimensional problem. And now this time, let us do it under gravity just so that we have our physical picture. This is x equal to 0 and the x-axis moves upwards in this fashion. And the potential is mgx, so v of x in this problem. Re with reference to the flow level. And we have a particle diffusing in a column in one dimension up there, in a big fluid column, infinite say, semi-infinite. And then we ask what would be the equilibrium distribution of the probability density or the density itself like a column of gas, assuming the whole thing is at constant temperature. Okay. That is not true of the real atmosphere, but assuming that you are going to get an exponential distribution, something with uh, probability of finding it at a height x is going to decay exponentially with the height. Okay. That is called the barometric distribution and we can actually write it down. It is very clear that we will have P equilibrium of x and x by the way 0 less than equal to x less than infinity. So, it is going in the vertical direction. This is proportional to e to the power minus mgx over k Boltzmann. That is the Boltzmann factor. The Hamiltonian is going to have p squared over 2m plus mgx and e to the minus beta Hamiltonian, the x part of it is precisely this. One should expect that. So let us write the exact equation down for the, the actual probability density using the Smolikovsky equation. So delta p over delta t x t is equal to 1 over m gamma delta over delta x, v prime of x, but v prime of x is just mg with a minus sign, right, minus v prime of x, so minus mg. The force is in the downward direction times p, p, the full p out there. There is no x because it got differentiated out. Okay. So it is actually an easier problem than the Fokker-Planck equation 
was for the velocity process or the OU process right? plus the usual thing uh, KT over M gamma D 2 P over D X 2. I have already had a minus V prime of X, right? And this became a plus V prime of X over the X. This uh, will become, of course, this will become minus plus. Uh, Let us see if the dimensions are okay. This is G over gamma and it should have dimensions of uh, of a velocity L T inverse because then L here and L T here which it does. This is L T to the minus 2 and this is L T, uh, T to the minus 1. So it is L T inverse which is a speed. So let us give it a name. Let uh, g over gamma be equal to c. It's got dimensions of uh, velocity, a uh, speed. So let's call it c. Okay. And this is our old friend d out here. Right? Of course, we can immediately write down what the equilibrium distribution is. It's precisely this because I pull out this is equal to zero. I pull out a d over dx. And whatever is in the bracket is a current, and that current must be zero at infinity. It's a constant in any case, and therefore you end up with this distribution. You have to normalize it from zero to infinity. You integrate, and the answer is some k t over m m g whatever it is times the exponential. So that's the barometric distribution. But our interest here is in some, some uh, something Sorry, slight. Full time dependence. Well, I'd like to get the full time dependence if possible. But first, let us see what this uh, stationary thing actually is like. Notice that if I call, th so this is equal to C delta P over delta X plus D times D 2 P over D X 2, where the C is given by that and D is K T over gamma as usual. Now you can form, if you had for instance a finite column, then there is one more macroscopic length scale in the problem which is the length of this fluid column. Then you can form a dimensionless number. So you can form LC over D. If this column extended to height L from 0 to L for instance, then this quantity has got dimensions of, this is L and that is L T inverse. So this L square T inverse, this is L square T inverse. Okay. So that is a dimensionless number and it will govern the motion fluid dynamics under a constant field of force. It has got a name. Is anyone familiar with this name here? All these dimensionless numbers in fluid dynamics have specific names like the Reynolds number which you are familiar with. This is called the Peclet number. And it plays a role in fluid dynamics and whatever it is. So we have settled the equilibrium distribution. It is this. Notice gamma cancels out in it as it should. There is no role for it in that. This dimensionally cannot exist in P equilibrium. This in fact cancels out. If you put it out of the bracket and set the rest equal to 0, then you just get KT over MG, which is what happens here. Now what about the exact solution? What would it look like? I am not going to solve it here now, but what would this actually look like? It depends on the initial condition. So we have to specify the initial condition and the boundary conditions. Huh? So the initial condition P of x 0 equal to some delta of x minus x naught say. So if I plot this P of x t as a function of x, initially it is a delta function at x naught. Remember you cannot go to the left of x equal to 0 nor can P be negative. As t increases and becomes infinite, this thing goes to the asymptotic 
exponential distribution. This is p of x 0 and this distribution is p of x infinity which is p equilibrium. It is an exponential thing. So the question is how does this delta function spike at t equal to 0, how does it spread out and become this exponential with a peak at 0 no matter what x0 is. So clearly you know, sort of physically you can see that initially immediately it will start diffusing. So it will do something like this and then the peak meanwhile starts shifting to the left so it will start doing this but then there is a bounce back. Anything that hits this cannot go there so it will probability mass will bounce back and gradually as this shifts left it becomes more and more pronounced and this gets flatter and flatter and eventually it goes to this. So clearly there is reflection at x equal to 0 which is obvious because under this diffusion process particles are going to hit the floor and they cannot go through the floor. There is no leakage through the floor. So what is the boundary condition for this? So the boundary condition the p of x t tends as x tends to plus infinity this tends to 0 it is a normalizable distribution. So the probability density must go to 0 as x goes to infinity. What is the boundary condition at the origin? At, at x equal to 0 so p of 0 t what is the condition on this? It is not 0, it is not 0. It, at any arbitrary time this probability density is not 0. In fact at t going to infinity all the probability mass much of it is concentrated here but the current is 0 hmm? and what is the boundary condition and everything lies in the boundary condition. If you have understood that then the job is done. So remember that the current here you pull out at d over dt and the gamma. So you can write this as equal to this whole site as delta over delta x of g over gamma mm, p plus k Boltzmann t over m gamma dp delta p over delta x. and minus this quantity is the current and you want the current at the floor to be 0. So it is a the boundary condition at uh, bc at 0 is delta p over delta x the gamma goes away plus m over k Boltzmann mg over k Boltzmann t p equal to 0 at x equal to 0 for all t. So sometimes that is a reflecting boundary condition. If you discretize this and did it as a random walk problem, it says the moment you come to 0, the particle cannot go to the left. So anything which tries to go to the left has to go to the right. So the probability of a jump to the right is plus 1. You have to impose that as a boundary condition and 0. So it is the current that goes to 0, not the probability density itself that does not do so. So given that you have to solve this equation, I am going to leave this as an exercise, I will mention what the solution is, it is a little messy to write down. How would you do this? Well you can do the, you can solve the full partial differential equation. We know the initial condition, we know t runs from 0 to infinity, we know x runs from 0 to infinity. So take Laplace transforms with respect to time and then you get an ordinary second order differential equation. This is a constant coefficient and so is this. So you can find a solution for the Laplace transform. You have to translate, uh, you know the initial condition out here. We know the uh, Laplace transform of the time derivative. It is S times the transform of this minus the initial value. It becomes a green function equation for whatever is the Laplace transform and then you have to invert that. Okay. So there would be various error functions, etc., etc. And then after that you have to invert the Laplace transform. Okay. But the problem is doable. It's, it's, 
exactly solvable. But we have extracted all the physical information from it. Now the rest is a matter of details. All right, so let me stop here today.